Hey guys, Hawk here. This is going to be the first of a couple build logs for the Blaster Oculus Dawn. This is going to be a blaster that I'm selling at End War. So the goal of this project is to see if I can put everything I have into one blaster and if I can have the stomach to still be able to sell it. I'm going to be putting everything I have into this. It's going to have a DRS cage, LEDs, crystal clear parts, hydro dipping, which I haven't done yet, and I'm even throwing in a 1995 crossbow. I skipped some of the cutting, some of the other stuff, because I don't really have access to be able to time-lapse footage right now. I explain more of this later in the video. I apologize for that, but I have what I have. So buckle in and we will go ahead and get started. All right, so I have this piece of film and it's just a tint reflecting film thing, but you can still see through it. But if the light's on this side, then it's gonna be reflective. This is just a test piece. I have 30% and I have 15%, which is basically the different levels of light ref refraction, excuse me, the lower number that you go in percentage, the more reflective it is, but the harder it is to see through. And so I ended up liking the 15% more than 30%, so I'm using this one as a test. Now, they actually sell this in big sheets, except I don't really need big long sheets, I just need this area right here. And again, this shape was just to test the shape. This is just a test piece. But luckily, they actually do sell sample sheets. This is like eight by five or six or something like that. But the sample sheets were just big enough to do what I want to do. So I just got those because these were 99 cents as opposed to like 20 or $30 rolls. So this is much better, except the only problem was that there's no adhesive on them. And so I had to go out and find an adhesive, and luckily I found this one. This is some sort of modeler's cement, and I got this at Michael's. And I spread it on there, and it goes on pretty thin, and I just kind of squished this on there, and it seems to be working fine. That is perfectly clear, as you may be able to tell. And I'm now realizing how messy my desk is, so I do apologize for that. But, um... It's gone on perfectly clear, and it's kind of still wet, like, in the middle, and I'm pretty sure that's never going to go away. However, it's sealing the edges, and there, it's making a vacuum in here, so it's never going to move, it's never going to um, delaminate. So, that's good enough for my purposes, and since the polycarbonate's going to be on this side, and the film will be on the inside... You're not going to have anyone touching it, so it's not going to be moving around or anything. So, uh, Now, the reason why I'm doing this is uh, still a bit of a secret, so I'm not going to fully reveal. But basically, this is going to go on the inside of the stock for the crossbow. I am a weak, weak, weak individual. I have some green Cherry MX switches. These are the real deal. There's ten of them in here. I only need three. I originally was on Mauser looking and they didn't have green switches, which is what I wanted. Basically, these are blue switches, except they have a higher gram weight, meaning they are they're have a heavier spring in there. They didn't sell them on Mauser and they didn't really sell them anywhere. I went ahead and ordered some blue switches on Mauser and then ordered some, I think it was white or gray. I ordered another one which has the same spring load as greens and then I took them apart and replaced the springs in the blue ones so that they were essentially greens and I was going to explain this and I was going to be like they're basically greens of course every time someone asks what kind of switches those are I'm going to have to explain that every single time so fast forward a couple weeks later I'm on Amazon casually browsing and they have green switches these were brand new listings, because these were not there before. Of course, I, I'm a weak, sad individual, so I went ahead and bought them, even though I already have the switches. Basically, I uh, cut out some polycarbonate, as you can see here, and that took a little bit of drilling and hand filing, but I eventually got it. That's going to be sitting somewhere up here, diagonally. These switches will just be little tactile switches right here, and that is going to control the colors in the RGB LEDs because the little control panel is just a little thing like this and it has like little buttons on there except they're the uh, dome ones where basically it's a waffle pattern of contacts on the PCB and then you have like a little dome of metal and you click the dome down didn't depth perception you click the dome down and that is what activates the button unfortunately it's very mushy you don't get a feedback at all so, 
obviously that's not good enough for that so get some nice cherry mx switches and so blues are way more common so just compare to that with a heavier load spring nice little click there and that is going to be nice sweet and to the point so this is the update so far almost have this all sanded I'm kind of taking it in chunks because this is a lot of sanding uh, especially in those little tiny crevices all in there but I've gotten most of the paint in the next stuff out of the way I just need to sand a few spots and then I'll be done with this side enough to well I mean there are, I have I need to sand these but these are very very easy it's very very soft plastic compared to the uh, ABS of today and it's very very smooth because their mold had to be a lot simpler because they didn't have the technology that they have now but I have already done this side completely and for those of you wanting uh, some sort of time-lapse I wish I could but I can only really c record on my phone unless I'm sitting in front of my computer with my webcam and my phone is mostly full of memory, memory wise I mean, so I can't record for very long relatively. If I want to record something I'm going to either have to move the webcam every single time I want to do a thing here, which number one is so I, I'm not gonna do it. It, it. There's so much setup that if it's not just there I'm never gonna want to do it and even if I was gonna do it it would be a pain in the neck etc. So basically the only way I'm gonna do this is if I get another webcam or I get a DSLR, which is way more out there. I have I want a DSLR for standard footage, but I just don't have that right now. And for those of you wondering, I have an S6 phone, so I can't expand the memory at all. You're not going to be getting any time lapses anytime soon unless a DSLR drops out of the sky or a webcam falls from the sky. Even if a webcam falls from the sky, that's still going to be some setup because I'm going to have to... Re anyway. Uh, you, I'm sorry, but you're probably not going to get time lapses for now. If you, if you guys, if that's a thing you guys really, really want, let me know in the comments below. First started by aligning this side with hot glue and making sure everything was perfectly aligned. And I actually tack hot glued this side as well. And once I was made sure that everything was aligned, I untacked all of the hot glue from this side, did all the sanding, put it back together so that this side of the shell was keeping this side of the shell aligned, and then I went in and used some DevCon. I don't actually use DevCon because uh, the places I get DevCon are all old stock for some reason, and so every time I get DevCon it never fully cures, it's like rubbery, and so Loctite is a much bigger company and it's the Loctite plastic is the exact same stuff, it's just a different brand. So I actually use Loctite, but for the sake of simplicity, you guys know what I'm talking about. I say DevCon because it's the exact same stuff. So DevCon all this, and then the stock was a little bit tricky, but I managed to get all of the epoxy underneath this thing so it has a good, nice, solid placement there. And then that is all epoxied on the inside, which again was kind of tricky, but managed. Still need to DevCon the rail on. It's just hot glued right now. That was kind of a last minute addition. That is from a Ravonix 360. I had been saving a shell for eons since I actually got into the hobby because I found it at Goodwill. Uh, I completely gutted it because that's useless. Saved a shell, chopped off the top rail, and now it's in the trash. Also, that is incredibly clean in there. I'm not sure if I'm going to be putting a clear cover on here. And I might be putting some LEDs in there, I'm not sure. So either way, I just made this super, super clean. Which I don't normally take the time to do. But obviously, that's going to be fine either way. This is a DRS cage I'm using. And I have started to fill in that with some paint and then wiping it off. There's a few sections like on the top, right after the S. That little line right there needs to be filled back in and then wiped away. It's kind of tricky. But I got this idea off of Nick Marvin off of Facebook. I think he has a YouTube channel. I will go ahead and link that in the description below. But he did this to his flywheel cage. And of course, I think that's freaking awesome. So I think I'm going to start doing that on all of my cages. I might actually open up Ethereal Fortress and put in some, uh, some detail there. Because that looks nice. Basically, you just put on the paint and wipe it off. It's because of you, Nick, that I, I went out and got a $5 thing of of paint, what is it, what is it called, uh, Citadel, Citadel Black, whatever that is, freaking $5, whatever, obviously, aluminum barrel shroud, because it's going to have, 
crystal clear parts. These are XP 180s, of course. So uh, this is the update log so far. I've gotten some things done. It doesn't look like I've done a whole lot, but these this is hours and hours and hours and hours of work, trust me. So I, I want to clean up some things. I want to get some things smooth, probably fill in some of these lines. Uh, because I'm going to be hydro dipping this, and so I don't really want all of this texture. So I'm probably going to be getting rid of most of it. I, I want to keep some of it for the sake of not just being a flat board, because that's kind of boring. But I will be hydro dipping this uh, properly, and I will be testing things, because this is going to be my first hydro dipping project, so I will be testing some other things first. Hydro dipping, getting my technique correct. But this is the update so far. I have all of the parts already ready, and that's that's going to be a thing. So, like always, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.